All right. Um, so here we are. We're in another balance patch, which is pretty good because this is my favorite type of content. Um, I think even more so, at least, I know I don't know. Uh, most content creators, right, most of us are like, they're trying to get views, trying to make money. So like usually newer units, they'll be more exciting because it's like, oh, a new unit. Uh, let's type this up and get everybody excited for the new unit. Um, for me personally, even the new units that have come out, I've never been like, you guys can kind of tell from my, you know, unit reviews. I'm not really too hyped for them all the time. Um, Peria, Ran, all these units that came out that I've reviewed or just kind of like, oh, a new unit's out. Okay, whatever. We'll have to see how it adjusts the meta. Uh, but personally, I'm always more excited to see um, developer notes on balance adjustments because it means units we've already have that already exist. Um, they get a new flavor to them. We get to like, you know, so again, to me, it's basically a new unit. It's like every time they do a balance patch, it's like six new units gets added to the game, which is like insane. It's a lot of fun for me. It's a lot of like, yeah, it's, it's interesting to see how that like that dynamic changes the game more than like one unit coming out. And it's like, OK, whatever. Right. Like, who cares? Um but yeah, personally, like I said, so this is my this is my favorite kind of stuff is looking at how the, all these balances and all that stuff. Uh, hopefully, the music I have in the background isn't too loud um, for anyone who recognizes it recognizes where it's from. Um, yeah, hopefully, I don't get uh, demonetized for it. It's all it's an old enough source that hopefully no one really cares. But um, that franchise is kind of like it's still around and kicking, so I don't know. We'll find out, I guess. Uh, so let's get in here. We'll go we'll go slow here. I uh, like this. So DJ Basar, that's pretty cool. I kind of got spoiled for this because I'm never like checking these developer notes and I don't have a Discord to tell me uh, when these things come out. So I saw that um, Mango had put out a video. I didn't watch the video. I, I try not to watch anything before I make these. Uh, and then afterwards, like later on, I'll talk about them and say, you know, what everyone has been talking about them and I'll point out what they've said. But in terms of my first reactions, I just want to, you know, from my opinions and then later on we'll sort of meld everyone's opinions together and see, you know, where the consensus is going. Uh, but yeah, so like I said, DJ Basar is kind of spoiled. This is where I saw the patch. Um, we'll see how he is. Um, I'm not really sure what you can do to DJ Basar. His kit is already pretty good as it is. It's just that he's overshadowed by people who do it better. So yeah, we'll, we'll see. Um, Haste is getting a buff, which is pretty interesting because Haste is on the banner right now. Now, no one really cares about Haste because ML Haste is better and you just feed all your copies into him. Um, but you know, if they make haste viable, that's cool. If not, he's just going to be better for PvP, PvE. And if you pull a random haste, then there you go. You'll have fun with him in PvE. Um, Shu is getting a buff, which is pretty cool because I liked, I've liked i liked Shu. Uh, I just don't use her because she's not really that viable right now. Um, and yeah, so I have to invest in the stuff onto her. So hopefully this will get me there. Uh, Shu's actually pretty good because she gives out team-wide immunity and she has a bunch of other stuff. She does a lot of damage and whatnot. Um, so Alencia is getting a buff. That's pretty cool. So Shu and Alencia, basically they're diametrics to each other. Um, Shu is just the water Alencia, and Alencia is just a, um, a grass Shu. Now, obviously, they don't do the exact same thing. Shu has immunity. Uh, she's got um, the crit resistance and all that stuff. So they, they have different kits, you know, don't get me wrong, but they kind of serve similar purposes. You just want um, a tanky bruiser with um, some utility, where Alencia has defense buff, Shu has um, crit resistance, and obviously Shu has uh, uh, immunity now with that exclusive equipment. So Wanderer Silk is getting a buff, which is pretty cool. It's more speed contesting um, for anybody who's, you know, you know <laughs> pushing the speed meta. That's another person to choose from. Uh, Montmorency and Angelic Montmorency is getting a buff. That's pretty interesting. Um, I just talked about Angelic Montmorency uh, with her comparison to Amelia, so we'll, we'll see what she does. I think Amelia is still going to be better, but, you know, Angelic Montmorency is one of the better healers in the game before you get start getting into five stars like and jack mom being a three star with a pretty decently easy specialty change is is pretty amazing like she's, she's gonna outclass basically every healer you have in the game until you start getting to five stars and like ml five stars so I'm glad to see she's getting a buff uh, adventure ras is getting a buff that's pretty cool considering adventure ras is already in the meta he's not 100 percent anymore um he's still there i mean you know you'll still see him every now and then but uh, he's not as prevalent as earlier a, a while ago and hopefully this puts him back up there. We'll see what he what, what they give him. Uh, time Matter is getting a buff because Time Matter has been useless since it came out. Um, Snow Crystal is getting a buff because Snow Crystal has been useless since it came out. Uh, and Eternus has been useless since it came out. So <laughs> we're finally going to get things to be usable. So let's talk about DJ Basar here. Now, uh, where am I going here? Where's my little... I can't find my mouse. There it is. Um, this is some pretty... There's a lot of changes here. Okay. So attacks the wind, 35% chance to stun. Uh, so this is his basic attack. Where's the awaken thing here? 
Because one of these... Okay, so this is the last one. Let's not... Because normally you start talking about this skill here. It's like, oh, this is the unawakened version of this container. So I just wanted to make sure which one. I forgot which one it was. I actually had the Uh Okay, so this... 35% chance for recovering health while he's... Mountain recovered portion. Okay. So I took the healing off the S2 and just put it onto his S1. Which is, you know, that's fine. Um, increases the amount recovered. So this does not AoE anymore. Which is kind of interesting. Um, yeah. Uh... That's that's all right, I guess. I mean, we have to see what they what they why they moved that, but no, here we go. Um, I'm assuming this is going to be like pretty important, so why don't we just skip down here real quick? So what do we get here? So this got reduced down to two turns. Yeah, immunity for two turns, combat readiness per, by thirty percent, and then he also has thirty percent damage reduction when this is while this is available. So we lost the turn, but we also lost the turn on the cooldown. And we lost the soul. So theoretically, that means that this, this is why it's a good thing I, I went forward. Theoretically, this is why this was changed. So this is this should be strong enough to compensate for the fact that we lost a lot here. Um, so let's take a look at this. With the sandstorm, inflicts barrier inversion on all enemies that has a 85% chance to decrease hit chance for two turns. When the target is granted a barrier, grants extra grants an extra turn to the caster. So is this a skill now? This is a skill now, where before... That's pretty interesting. Before this used to be a passive, which now they just completely dumpster that and turn this into a skill, right? Yeah. Everlasting Oasis is now gone. So that's, that's pretty interesting. This is, uh, this is crazy. I, I don't know if they've done something like this before. Um, so basically you have a skill. Uh, you hit everybody, get this barrier in inversion, which I guess we're going to find out what that is. 85% um, chance to decrease hit, which is pretty whatever. Um, when you hit a barrier, you get an extra turn. So you basically take this into this, theoretically. So this is going to be your first thing here. Barrier inversion and first barrier into damage, unaffected by the effect by effect resistance and wow, no effect resistance and whether the tech hits. Ooh, that's crazy. That's this is insane. I mean, for one, those of you who like running revivers, now you can run. You know, you can run DJ Basar with Arby, right? Because if if Arby triggers, um, if Arby triggers <laughs> the uh, the barrier from ML Haste, you're basically gonna invert that barrier and kill half the team. <laughs> That's hilarious. I I I really want to see how this turns out. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, this is gonna be a lot of fun. Um, oh man, that, that's pretty crazy. Um, yeah, I like this barrier inversion thing. Uh, I'm not sure like who else is this gonna affect. Um, it's an AOE skill, so it's probably gonna affect people like uh, like Kisei. No one uses Kisei. I use Kisei. Um, who else is this gonna affect? Man, they just made Basar. I mean, obviously, I mean, you know, <laughs> as dumb as I am, obviously we just you know inverted uh, MLCC. Like MLCC is now just got dumpster harder than she was before, which is why I, back then I didn't run her because the shields was like insanely powerful but it's easily countered now it's even worse um so this is pretty good i'm i'm definitely going to be using Basar a lot more um because not only so this does double damage so if you have a barrier like mlcc if you have a barrier for 3000 hp your health bar is now plus 3000 with this you lost that whole barrier so you strip that barrier which is irresistible by the way unaffected by effect resistance and it doesn't even have to hit so keep that in mind uh not only did you lose that 3k health which usually takes forever to take that off because mlcc is there with uh, aureus to reduce the damage so that that barrier is gone you don't have to worry about it anymore but on top of that you get an extra 3k damage on them um again <laughs> with uh it kind of makes revive a little more viable so if you're willing if you're willing to sacrifice let's say um dj basar and like made chloe they could do pretty good together, um, I think. But I think maybe the revival is too much. Because you can only do this once. It'll take a while to get this back up again. So maybe not made Chloe. But definitely maybe Ruel would be pretty good. She revives once. They get the barrier. You invert it. And you're good to go. So this is pretty good. I, I actually like what they did with him. Um, they kind of changed what he does. Just because what he used to do was this, right? He used to do cleanse and a little bit of healing. Obviously, uh, the clean the healing sucked. I mean, it's never been good. Uh, so it was just a cleanse. Um, the cleanse was pretty good for the time, but we're at the point where, like, you know, um, ML, ML Calric is giving out cleanses, is basically immune to stuns and sleeps, uh, and on top of that, gives you attack buff. So, yeah. We had to give him something. And uh, so, that's yeah, pretty interesting. So, you activate this, it goes down three turns, then you activate this. So, there's, there's two, no, not this, uh, this one up here, and then you do this down here, and then it's two turns. Um, 
I wonder if we're gonna get our are we gonna get a ticket or something back for this? This is a this is a big enough change that some people I mean it's it's for the better I think but some people are gonna be pissed I mean you already know how Epic Seven is some people are gonna want a ticket for this um, even though it's an improvement uh, it's just a change in this function um, but I don't know we'll see am I gonna get my molas back can I just like recall him like in terms of getting my molas and all that stuff back and reinvest into him or how is this gonna work out because this is this is such a big change in terms of like like I said it's not making him weaker it's making him better I think for the you know absolutely there's no He's absolutely not worse than he was before. However, the 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 fact you have to concede is that it is it is in fact a big change. So take that as you will. I don't know. We'll, we'll see how this how this how they handle this. Uh, maybe it'll say down here. I don't feel like reading all this. Uh, yeah, I don't really care. Um, okay, so now we're looking at high haste attacks normal with enormous sight. 70 percent chance to inflict bleeding. Steals one buff. The target is earth. Okay. Yeah, so, okay, we lost the bleeding, and we just got the, the buff steal, which, I mean, I guess, and it's also kind of nerfed, so not only do we lose the bleeding, we also, um, the buff steal got reduced down to 75%. Now, okay, if we're, if we're talking, you know, mathematically here, he went from 100% only on Earth, which is like, you know, there's five elements, 20% chance, right, to now 75 overall to everyone, so, you know, whatever, take that as you will. Um, the buff steal, I mean, it's it's kind of whatever, you know, I don't really, this is kind of weird. Uh, now let's look at this, this is, this is S3, I think. Attacks all enemies with Envoy Scythe. Dispelling two buffs, that's pretty good, because back then he didn't dispel anything. Dispelling two buffs before 100% chance each to inflict two bleeding effects, which before it was three. Three bleeding effects. A critical hit has an 85% chance to decrease, well that's pretty good. Uh, if there are three or fewer enemies, the skill increases with fewer enemies, uh, enemies, and no longer triggers counter attack. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess uh, <laughs> I don't really know uh, what his thing is anymore. Um, I mean, back then he was kind of like dedicated to just like we're gonna use him in PVE against Earth. You kind of can still do that, I guess, but I don't know what this does not trigger counter attack thing does. Again, I just made that ML Ken video. Here's another person not. Being able to trigger by counterattacks. Not only that, this will not trigger uh, Zerato's S2 passive, which that's another video I just made. So <laughs> take that as you will. Um, I really do think the more people getting this, the more that ML Ken video and ML Zerato video are sort of like jumping up in like you know, because this counterattack thing was like for damage people. Like if they needed to do damage, you couldn't counterattack them. But now not only is it for damage people, it's also give they're also giving it to people who inflict debuffs. Which again nerfs Zerato, so I'm not really sure why they gave him this. Like, I'm not sure what the like. I don't know. They're just kind of slapping it on all kinds of stuff. But specifically him, I'm not really sure like what they want out of him. Is he supposed to go? Is he supposed to go first now? Is he an early a first turn unit? I'm not sure. Uh, element blah, blah blah. This adjustment, he will be more vital content. So they just made him more broadly usable, which I'm not sure what that means. Like making someone more broadly usable doesn't really help in Epic Seven very well, unless you're like overtune and now he's useful against everybody um but you know take that as you will uh attack the enemy with a spear increase caster's common awareness by 20 percent a critical hit will this is her s1 yeah her s1 now grants an extra turn which is pretty interesting um her s1 used to do more damage on this but now i don't know i don't know if they took this and just dumped it in here this might be like it's more damage without the soberin but I don't know if it's as much damage as it did used to be with the soberin i doubt it they kind of they don't really do that when that happens but you know um, so, okay, that, that's pretty interesting. Uh, attacks the enemy, wildly swinging the spear, absorbs some of the damage as health. Wasn't that, yeah, damage? No. Oh, she didn't heal before. Okay, I, for some reason I thought she did. So that's pretty cool. Uh, she hits really hard with this skill. Like, this skill can one-shot people if you have max stacks and everything. Um, so now she, not only that, she also penetrates defense by 70%, which is pretty crazy. When she has five, she has five extra, she has more extra damage, and she resets the cooldown. Um, so yeah, basically all they did was increase the uh, penetration by 20%, um, and as well as, you know, um, she gains health now. Uh, that's pretty good. Uh, I think, I don't know, if, I mean, this by itself isn't going to really put her back in the meta, but it's certainly just going to make her do what she was doing before even better. So, you know, let's go look at her, her S3 here. Freezes all enemies before, with cream, crit resistance, and grants immunity to the caster for two turns. Increase the portion of the caster's max health. When the skill is unavailable due to count cooldown, so after she uses it, 
Wow, she's going to be a lot. Oh, wait, that's crazy. 20% counterattack chance. Um, see, that's what I'm saying. They're just sprinkling counterattack chance on random people. Like, I mean, come on. Like, Zerato could use some. <laughs> like, please. Um, but yeah, so this is pretty interesting. Um, you kind of want her to go, I guess, decently fast. Uh, I mean, you know, invest in health, crit damage, and, and, and stuff like that more. Uh, but you kind of want her to go decently fast so you can get the S3 off. Um, give everybody immunity and crit resistance. And then, you know, just sit there and hit people with the counter. Now... This might be kind of interesting because I'm probably going to run her on a counter set because of this, just to boost it up to 50% counter chance. Um, just farming stacks on the S1, which gives her 20% combat readiness push, for those of you obviously paying attention. Um, and then just, you know, if she needs healing, she just like dump this on somebody and just delete them. Uh, so yeah, it's pretty interesting. Um, I think she's going to be a lot of fun, personally. Uh, what, like a counter set? You can run, it's 50-50, you can run counter set. Immunity or speed immunity. You can still run speed because um, if you're just valuing the 20%, right? But I, I like to. I'd, I'd prefer to boost this up to make it more consistent, personally. Uh, but yeah, I think I like where she's at. Um, you, I mean, hell, you might even be able to run her on like a healthy, like a crit damage set if you're okay with the speed. Uh, but I think a speed set probably be better just because you want her to go decently fast so you can get the crit resistance and the immunity up for everybody. Uh, but you know, take that as you will. Like I said, uh, I don't. I'm not sure we're gonna see her in the meta as much anymore. Still. Uh, but definitely this is a lot helpful. This is uh, we're gonna see her again. She's gonna delete people easier with this uh, And she's gonna be really annoying taking a lot of turns because of that um, But yeah, we'll we'll see all right, so now we're looking at Alencia. So Alencia's s1 has been increased in damage, which is pretty good Noble blood uh, The awaken is down there. Okay, so at the end of the turn has 100% chance to grant mind's eye Okay, so they just boosted that to 100% chance After being attacked, so this is just at the start of the turn before she does anything, she has it, which is pretty crazy. Because uh, it was like, she people kind of took it for granted that she always had it, but every time you used her, she never had it, because she got hit like three times and she would never get it. Uh, but this is interesting. This is interesting. Uh, mind's eye for the caster for one turn. So yeah, when it's her turn, she's basically going to... So basically, every time she S1, she's going to S2, unless she's got buff block or something, right? Keep that in mind. But theoretically, every time she's going to S1, you're going to get S2, which is pretty good. Uh, which is what I had said as soon as Ram came out and she had the demon mode where she could S1 twice. I was like, just give, just give uh, um, Alencia the ability to do that too instead of waste, worrying about the stupid, uh, the Mind's Eye proccing. But anyway, that's cool. So here we go. This is especially because like she, she has her own buff Mind's Eye, but like, you know, we had Milam who just gave it to herself. We had things like, um, what's the name? Uh, ML Violet who just gave himself the evasion buff. Like everyone else just gives it to themselves. Alencia has to sit there and wait for the opponent to do something to get the, the Mind's Eye. So I'm, I'm glad she has it now. After using Eradicate, which is the S2 that's attached to this, the... Ooh, it went up to 50. That's pretty cool, too. Uh, cannot be dispelled. Increases effectiveness by 50. And, oh, we don't get the effect resistance, which is good. I, I'm glad we lost the effect resistance to get more effectiveness. That's a lot better. Um, so after using Eradicate, when the caster is granted Mind's Eye, activates Trample. Okay, Trample strikes enemy. Inflicting injuries, that's not the biggest deal, but it's, you know, more than nothing. Uh, blah, 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 up to 10% every time. Wow, this is a, this is a pretty high multiplier. So 10% injuries, um, that's pretty interesting. 75% chance, yeah. So basically, like I said, they just made Alencia better. Um, the, the problem with Alencia wasn't that she wasn't good at what she did. She was pretty good at it. It's just that what she did wasn't really conducive in the meta. So keep that in mind. Is it going to make her more prominent? Uh, we're probably going to see her explode for a while, and then she'll kind of calm down again just because, like I said, she just does what she did before, but better. The, nobody had a problem with what she did before. It's just that what she did before wasn't entirely useful. You need more in your team. Uh, but uh, that's pretty cool. So uh, we also get more damage on Trample. So, you know, actually, we might see her a little more because uh, the increased damage here and the increased damage here with the consistency of Mind's Eye and double attacking everybody um, is pretty good. Let's take a look at this S3 here. Uh, attacks all enemies, Dragon's Might. Uh, dispelling all buffs, good, again, always. Uh, granting increased defense for everybody, that's pretty good, obviously. <laughs> it was already there. Increases combat readiness of the caster by 50%. Yeah, so I think, um, yeah, I think Alencia, we're going to see a lot more too. Um, yeah, I think uh, given like things like, um, you know, now we've got, what's his name? Uh, DJ Basar is more in the meta. We're having more cleansers going on and all that stuff. Uh, it's certainly going to pave the way for more, like, you know, people like her to be there. Now, granted, Alencia's biggest problem is she's going to have to go up against um, Hua Young, and she's just going to get one-shot by Hua Young, 
Whereas someone like uh, Shu has a little more advantage because she, she Shu can just one shot Hua Young, right? Um, so keep that in mind. Uh, this is probably in retrospect, or not in retrospect, but like you know, a few minutes after, more more thought. Uh, we're probably going to see Shu a lot more just because she's a better counter to uh, Hua Young, especially a better counter than um, Teyu. Because like I said, Teyu just kind of goes up to her and says, "Okay, I'm going to reduce your cooldown so you can S3." Whereas Shu is just going just going to hit her and she's going to die. But, like I said, Taiyu's not the worst counter to her. Taiyu's S1 into S2 can just kill her as well, so keep that in mind. Um, but yeah, I think it's pretty good. Um, like I said, Alencia is going to be kind of like... She's going to be a little less just because um, there's so many good fire. So much good fire out there right now. But uh, yeah, I think this is, these are awesome changes. I'm going to have a lot of fun using Alencia as soon as I get gear for her again. Uh, Lensi has exclusive equipment. Uh, Mind's Eye doesn't get 20%. Recovers Cash's health when using Eradicate. Amount recovered. So this is pretty good. I'm probably going to go... I might go with this one. I forgot what I have on her now. Um, I think I have the one that has more damage. That gives you more damage on the Eradicate. <laughs> which is good because now you're going to be doing more damage, right? Uh, so let's talk about Wanderer Silk. Wait, did it? Hold on. Let me see. I don't know, I kind of skipped over Wanderer Silk, I, I didn't realize. Oh yeah, no, no, I, I said, I just had someone else in mind. I thought it was Wander, um, or Wander Wanda for some reason. Uh, okay, so, shoots arrows at the enemy, 50% chance. Bleeding, so the bleeding was dumb, because, I mean, who cares? And so she's losing the speed, whatever, right? And the target is a little better than the bleeding. Um, I think, personally, I mean, you, know, you can debate that, so it's up to you, but I think the target's probably better than the bleeding. For her specifically, uh, fires. So this is the S two fires arrows at the end at the enemy to attack, dispelling one buff. When the caster has a buff, triggers a dual attack with the element. Okay, that's pretty cool. Um, where before this used to do decreasing combat radius by hundred by ten percent, has a fifty percent chance to to grant an extra turn of the same skill. Um, yeah, and then if they're debuffed, you're gonna get the same skill twice. Uh, this is kind of interesting. Uh, so they're kind of making her more irritating because now she's getting, she's putting target on people as well as dual attacking because of this. Um, her most important aspect of her kit was like, wow. Ugh. The most important aspect of her kit before was her S3. Like the S1 and S2 were just kind of whatever. Um, but now just looking at this, she has the highest speed bonus for your whole team, I think. Tied with... Um, tied with Vildred. I think Vildred gives you 14 or 12 or something like that. Actually, I'm going to pause this. I'm going to look that up. Just because I'm going to waste your time here. Uh, so yeah, Vildred only gives you a 12 speed increase. So now you have a more like readily available uh, speed imprint. Because everybody's got like tons of... Um, everybody's got tons of... Uh, what's her name? Wanderer Silks, right? Uh, so now she gives out 14 speed, which again beats out Vildred. So now she's like the queen of the speed imprints uh, for how readily accessible she is and having the highest one in, in general. Right, so now let's let's look at the main skill. We've been kind of holding off for long enough here. Attack man with light arrow, inflicting silence uh, and decreasing attack for two turns and decreasing commandness by 100%. Okay, so that's kind of the same before. Grants barrier to the caster for two turns. I mean, we just saw someone who inverted barriers, so you know, <laughs> take that as you will. Uh, barrier strength increase the portion of the caster's level. Okay, so that's all we got. <laughs> all we got was, uh... And it took a lot of damage. Yeah, we, we lost 5% on all of these. I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not really sure what, um... What they did with Wanderer Silk. Like, all this kit seems kind of weird. I feel like... Like, she also lost the speed scaling, right? So it's kind of like... I think she, I would have liked her better if she was like this, and then got this, but it's, it feels like just to give her the more... the biggest speed imprint... They like nerfed a bunch of her stuff, to me personally, anyway. Because, like I said, the target's better than the bleed, but this gave you two skills in one rather than a dual attack. Now, the dual attack's all right, but it takes forever. This was two turns, right? This is three turns, and all you're getting is a dual attack. Uh, then this down here just gives her a barrier, which I guess makes her annoying. If you run her with, like, uh, what's that What's that artifact? Um, the stealth one? If you're wondering what the stealth one, she's going to be really irritating because you can't get her out of the barrier and the stealth unless you have DJ Basar, who we just saw is just going to, like, <laughs> destroy her. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. I think this is... Uh, I, I, she's kind of weird. Uh, this is a, an absolute win. 
Um, at this point, it doesn't even matter what's in her kit. Like, all this stuff is irrelevant just because the speed is so important. The fact that she now has the highest. Um, yeah, so... Like I said, this is alright, I guess. You decrease attack and combat readiness by 100%. Uh, but it doesn't strip or anything. And it, I think she, I think with the exclusive equipment, one of her EEs, she does strip on this S3. So take that as you will. Um, but yeah, so, you know, hopefully... Oh, okay, and then this one gave her, like, the automatic fire dual attack thing, but I used to run the whatever. Increases target effectiveness chance of basic shoot by 15%, which is this one. So you get 65% chance, which is, like, who cares? <laughs> it just this one kind of sucks now. It used to be good because now you get an extra attack every time. Uh, grants cast her an extra attack regardless of whether the enemy is buffed or debuffed using automatic, automatic fire. So this one was a lot better before because you got a dual attack. You got to do it twice every two turns. So it was like S3, S2, or S2 if you wanted to. I mean, I wouldn't recommend it, but S2, uh, double S2, S3, and then you can double S2 again, and then you can S1 and then double S2 again. So every turn you were just doubling up your damage. But like I said, most people ran the... the I think I think it's an S3 um, buff cleanse, but you only remove one. So, you know, take that as you will. Um, okay, so forget Montmorency. We're looking at Angelic Montmorency. Okay. Uh, sleep Sorcery. She has a 50% chance to put him to sleep, which is better than nothing. Um, yeah, that 35% chance, it happens sometimes. Like, you just get it off randomly, but it's not that big a deal. Oh, is this? There's no way. Awaken. Oh my gosh, it dispels two before giving immunity. Finally. This was like, the way they had done this, I could understand why they did it. It was kind of to nerf her a little bit. Um, it's like, okay, she gets immunity and she dispels two, bu two debuffs, uh, but to kind of make her like a three-star, let's have the immunity go up first and then the dispel after so that, you know, you can't just counter uh, block buff block. Uh, but now you can, so that's pretty cool. I'm glad to see this change because this has been, like, to me it's been annoying since it came out. To a lot of people have been really frustrated about this when it came out, but I kind of, I wasn't as frustrated because I realized it was like a balancing issue. Uh, but now the game has, like, the, the strength of the game has increased so much that, like, you can get away with this, and she's still a pretty weak three-star unit. Like I said, having having said that, um, she's still a very good healer, so I, I'd recommend her if you don't have her. Um, especially because you can get her max imprinted and all that stuff and ready to go. Uh, the only other person I'd probably recommend if you get enough copies of her is like Doris is probably a, really good too. Uh, but yeah, take that as you will. So they took this 15% that made this 50, I guess. It was already 50. So they took this off, and they gave us... Attack by enemy that is not these people. Damage suffered. So she takes 15% reduced damage. Okay, that's pretty interesting. Um, yeah, I guess it just made Montmorency slightly better than she already was, which is, again, good for new players. For most players, she's just kind of like, doesn't really matter. Uh, so we increased the healing on the S3. Okay, that's pretty good. I run him on um, Aureus. Uh, usually the enemy goes first. Uh, Raz is kind of fast, but not that fast, right? So the enemy's going to go first, drop his HP down because he's taking Aureus hits, and then, fortunately, the S3 gives him a bit of health back, and then, you know, you kind of offset that a little bit because without Aureus, you kind of overheal a lot of the time because you want to open with the S3, right? So thanks to Aureus, it makes that better. The other problem I have now is that, like, he takes a little too much damage, and the healing on the S3 doesn't get him, doesn't top him off well enough. Um, this isn't probably going to, this isn't going to make that big a difference, but, you know, it's going to, just more healing is better, right? Uh, so 100% chance to grant immunity to the caster, the ally with the highest attack, except for the caster. Wait, what? Is it just a wording change? The ally with the highest attack, except for the caster for two turns when using command strike. I think it's just a wording change. The ally with the highest attack for two turns when using command strike. Yeah, this gives immunity to both the ally and him. This gives it to both the ally and him. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. Grants immunity to the caster. And the ally with the highest attack except the caster. What the f I guess the problem here is that he if he if his attack is too high, for whatever reason. If he's the highest attack unit, he just gives himself immunity twice, and not one of the other teammates. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. So, I mean, I guess that's what that is. Increases the amount of recovered. 
by 100%. Oh, so they, they basically took this. So we're not getting more HP healing. We're just getting what was already there put into there. Okay, so it's just going to be the same. If you have him max ruined and all that stuff, it's going to be the same amount of healing. So don't worry about that. Uh, after the ally in the back row suffers a single attack, the damage suffered is 30% or more of max health. Grants a barrier to the target for two turns. This is pretty good. I like this. Wow, 40% of the caster's HP. Yeah, I think because Basar and this new uh, shield inversion mechanic is being introduced, we're going to see a lot more shields out there. Where the shields are like, they've already been kind of like, a, you know, ever since MLCC has come out, shields have been very strong. Um, but, you know, thanks to strippers and all that stuff, they've been kind of, you know, they've still been very strong even with that. But I think now that we have a humongous, like, um, counter to shields, we're going to start seeing shields a lot more in a lot of different stuff. Um, and this is probably going to be one of the first waves. But this is actually pretty good. Um, if they take more than 30%, they're just going to get a humongous shield. Like, that's almost half of Raz's health. And most Raz's are, like, 21 to 2400 HP. That's a 12,000... Uh, we'll, we'll go we'll go with a better estimation. We'll, that's like a 10,000... Or not 10,000. Yeah, 10,000 HP barrier. It's pretty crazy. Um, yeah, so that's, that's pretty fun. Uh, reduces the skill cooldown by one turn when an enemy is killed when an attack and increases the damage of the next attack by um, 18%. Can only be activated once per skill. Um, so yeah. Increases damage by 6. Okay. Skill cooldown by initial 12. Okay, so this is kind of just... It, now it does nothing. Now it used to do nothing unless you kill somebody. Now it does something and then more something after someone dies. Um, okay, who cares? It's still it's still worthless. I mean, <laughs> yeah, nobody cares. Um, snow crystals increases effect resistance by 20% after an enemy non critical hit. Uh, you get 8%. So yeah. So basically, this is this is what I had said. If you, I think if you go back to my shoe when I talked about her or talked about her artifact, this is basically what I had said they should give her was give this artifact 20% crit resistance. This effect resistance was dumb. I'm not sure who put this here, but they just put it here because they didn't have no, they didn't have nothing else to do. Well, this makes more sense. It's more synergetic, synergetic, synergetic uh, with the rest of this thing. So this, you get a bonus CR push when you don't get critical hit. Uh, thanks to this, now your chances of getting critical hit are reduced by 20%. So, yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure. Like this, this is so. Th this explanation is so short and like obvious that I'm not sure who put this to begin with. It was just like, I don't know, some intern or something. That was dumb. But I guess now it's the way it should have been the whole time. It's still going to be used? Probably not. Um, maybe Shu can use it just because um, she already gives crit resistance, but they, they don't stack well enough. So this plus her crit resistance doesn't give her 70% chance crit resistance, right? This gives her, I don't I mean, the numbers, you have to like multiply it out and like it's something, it's something a lot lower. So it's probably going to be something like 72%. No, not 72 Um like 62 percent or something like that I, I don't, it's hard to like i don't remember the calculation leave me alone um eternus increases common readiness of the caster by four by six percent when a debuffed ally except for the caster starts their turn okay increases the common readiness of the caster by seven has a debuff at the end of the enemy's turn um this is kind of interesting just because this one had more chances to proc. Uh, this only has one chance to proc. It's a little higher, so on the bottom end, it's only 1%. On the top end, you've got uh, 2%. Um, I'm not really sure how I feel about this. Especially, this one's, again, this is going to proc easier because it's going to be the enemy's turn. So they're going to go, they're going to debuff everybody. That turn's going to end, and now you're going to get the 7%. We're here, they're going to debuff everyone. The next person's going to debuff, and then the next person's going to debuff. And then it's going to be your turn. Your, whoever's going first goes first, and then this triggers. And by the time this triggers, your heal is probably high enough that it's going to take their turn. So this is only going to trigger once per turn at the end of the day anyway. Um, but this one's just going to be more consistent. So every time they debuff you, uh, you're going to get 7% um, movement increase or whatever, CR push. Um, and that's about it. So the artifacts are kind of dumb, but that's just because the artifacts were like built to be dumb. I'm not sure who built them, who built them but... Um, like it, like time matter still sucks. Uh, it was built to suck from the beginning, and it still sucks. Um, this didn't wasn't really built to suck, but it was kind of like this was just here, and then this was the skill. Now they work together, and even them working together still isn't going to be seen that much action. Um, this nobody used this, and I'm like ninety seven percent sure no one's going to use this now anyway. So the artifacts are kind of whatever. Uh, Adventure Raz. This is this is nothing but helpful. 
Um, especially like because I use Adventure Raz in like um, raid and hell raids, so sometimes uh, your damage dealer dies. Uh, but having that, especially because I use Lorena, right? She's not the tankiest in the world. But having Lorena and this buff there, I mean, you know, she's just safer. Um, this is just a wording change, and the healing is in, already included. So basically, nothing changed with Raz other than this. So this is the only thing that's different, uh, which I think is you know just an absolute plus considering Raz is already a really strong unit. Um, Angelic Montmorency, uh, she has 15% damage reduction, which is like, okay, that's fine. Um, I think it's actually, it's a lot more important than I make it out to seem because, uh, Adamant Shield is reducing in effectiveness because what I said before, where like people are finding ways to get around critting people, that they're dealing damage without crits necessarily, right? Uh, and just having her a flat damage reduction is pretty good because we're not, you know, this would be useless if you had an Adamant Shield on the team. But like I said, we're kind of not using Adamant Shield as much. Uh, so now this becomes useful again. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty good. Again, this this thing is just like a minor annoyance thing. Like now this is good. Okay. Buff lock doesn't make Montmorency's S3 irrelevant. Um, what else? Wander Silk. Uh, the only thing Wander Silk is adding is the 14 speed. That's it. Like her, that's her whole change. All this stuff is like, it went from being okay to being okay again. Um, and the only thing that's making her stand out is this. Uh, let's move. Alencia. Alencia got a pretty big buff, but she's in a meta where Hua Young is here, and she's one of the more prevalent units, so we're kind of, you know, we're kind of screwed, especially with injury running around. So, like, not only that, you have to contend with, like, Ravi. You have to contend with um, Bellion and all that stuff. And Bellion's going to reduce your HP on her, which will, in turn, uh, reduce your damage. So I think that's why they gave her more damage here and more damage here, is because they knew that was kind of coming. Um... But yeah, I think overall she's pretty good. Uh, she now has a higher chance to um, to strip, which is a good thing. Uh, she gives herself uh, increased speed here, which I think is pretty good. Um, I think she's pretty good candidate for revenge set personally. I think I I've been kind of wanting to because you don't you want to lens you want to put as much speed on Alencia as you possibly can while maintaining health and damage, but you don't want to go too fast because if she goes too fast, she's gonna go before all the buffs are up, right? So you want her to go after the buffs are up. So with this skill. You can make her slower with the revenge set. Then she goes after everyone has their buffs up, strips them all. She has a 50% chance to boost her own speed, and when they, as they target her, her damage gets her HP gets lower, and she starts cycling faster and faster. So that's kind of to me that's just a, a one aspect I saw. I kind of like about it. Um, it also kind of makes it so that you can kind of run like um, like a crit damage set on her, and just have her do insane damage. Uh, with a lot of health and decent speed, you don't want to, don't neglect speed. Probably run around a speed boot uh, if you're running a crit damage set, um, and then but just try to get as much damage out of her as you can. And I think that's the way to go. Is like, um, like I said, having her wait, hold back until they get their buffs up, then strip them all, and then just like trample them with your with your massive like damage that she's doing now. Uh, like I said, I think we're gonna see a lot of Shu because Shu now is like a you know not only is she just a good counter to. Um, Hua Young, she's just a she's gonna be a very strong unit against a lot of stuff in general. Um, with the counter chance, is gonna make her really annoying again, especially because she's got a twenty percent uh, CR push, uh, and then on top of that, she's got immunity and crit resistance for everybody, which is insane. Um, then haste again, haste is just kind of like who cares? Like <laughs> no one's gonna use haste, no one cares. Uh, and then again, Basar is probably the one of the bigger highlights of this because. This this barrier inversion is going to be really strong, especially considering how prevalent MLCC is still in the meta. Um, yeah, so keep an eye out for that. I think I think that's it. Yep, that's about everything. So if you got DJ Basar, congrats. Uh, he's now more useful than he was before. Um, he doesn't have to. He's not competing with uh, what's his name with ML Calric per se, the way he was before. Um, he's now doing his own thing. He's got Dispel, um, he's got Dispel, Immunity, Combat Readiness push, uh, plus his own damage reduction thing here. And now he's also got this thing here where he just like dumpsters people with shields. And if they, yeah, if they have a barrier, he gets an extra turn, which is pretty good. Um, especially like, again, <laughs> ML Lilius has an annoying shield uh, what's his name? Uh, even ML Calric has an annoying shield. ML CC has been around with her shield since forever. All these units like Pieria, who gives herself a shield. Um, again, ML Haste. Like all these shielding people have been really irritating for a while. And the main thing you could do was just strip them. 
But this is even better than a strip because you don't have to worry about effect resistance and you get free damage out of it. Um, so yeah, I think this is pretty good. I wonder if this is enough to like um, just kill Pieria with a one shot or something like that. Because Pieria has no, I, I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah, it's pretty interesting. Uh, I like, I like it. Uh, you don't, you don't strip the, uh, you don't strip the immunity, but the barrier is enough, and then you get a bit of free. Uh, what's it called? So yeah, uh, hopefully we'll we'll see how this goes, and I'll probably, like I said, I have shoe. Shoe's not six star. My Lancia is 6 star plus 15, so I'll probably try to break her out and see what we can do with her. Um, and DJ Basar, of course, like I said, is just going to be... I'm probably going to boost him up. Um, the problem with Basar is you really need a lot of, like... You need health, and you need effect resistance on Basar. Because of this, I'm probably not going to be too worried about running speed on him. I'm not going to run him, like, 100% speedy, but, like... He's not going to be, like, super slow either. Unless... Actually, you know, I've... I've seen it before, it's not the most effective thing, but a counter Basar um, could work. I have to I have to look into that. A counter DJ Basar. I'd have to look into that. That'd be pretty fun. Uh, especially with higher effect resistance. Like 200 effect resistance on counter is like that sounds really irritating. Uh, but yeah, so till next time we'll we'll see how these play out and I'll have a guild war video up later today. Um, yeah.